Hello, I'm Patty Creevy. There's a lot to love about this Peel region. When I first came here in 1985, I was struck by the beauty of the place and by the incredible variety of bird life we have here. These are the resident birds of the Peel Estuary. Each spring, new flocks of birds arrive. These shorebirds have come here from their breeding grounds in the Arctic to feed. Their arrival at our wetlands is the end of their amazing journey. In the summer of 2007, on these islands behind me, two birds were tagged. One was a red knot, the other a curlew sandpiper. After they were tagged, they started their journey northward. And then in July 2008, these birds were discovered. They were near the Yellow Sea, near Beijing, and they had travelled an incredible 8,000 kilometres. Starting their journey from the Peel Estuary, these tiny birds had flown all the way to Broome, then across the Indian Ocean, over Southeast Asia. There they landed in China. They were then spotted by two researchers. We saw the two birds tagged in Peel region in our coastal study site to Yidong in northeast China in May. We were surprised and very happy to see them because they are the first birds we saw with West Australia lag flags. But we know that their breeding grounds are in the Arctic. Now that's a further 6,000 kilometres away. What were they doing in China? Bill Rutherford led the groups which tagged these two birds. Now he thinks he knows the answer. The birds stopped off in China to refuel for the next stage in their migration northwards to the Arctic Circle. To understand this process, we can use the example of a freeway that starts in Perth and finishes in Darwin. If we were to travel up that freeway, we would need to stop at various stages along the way to refuel our vehicle. The Yellow Sea is a refueling stop for these migratory shorebirds on their journey north and south. These shorebirds behind me, they've flown 14,000 kilometres from the Arctic Circle. They've come here to feed. By the end of summer, they'll go back to the Arctic where they'll breed. They've come over this ancient route used by their ancestors for thousands and thousands of years. The East Asian Australasian Flyway is one of the world's greatest migratory pathways. It stretches from Australia goes northwards to Russia and Alaska, passing through 22 countries. About 5 million birds fly along it each year. These are the wetlands of the Peel Harvey Estuary. This is the final stop for many birds on their southward migration. They support a great variety of plant and animal life. They are a rich source of food for these birds. This is part of the peel Yalgarup system and this system is the most important system for water birds in the southwest of Western Australia. We rely on these systems to maintain these birds. We have 14 species of shorebirds that rely on this system. We've had counts of over 20,000 birds here and in the past 150,000 birds. So you can see how important this area is. Each spring, birds like the red knot and the curlew sandpiper arrive to feed on the macro invertebrates in the waters. During the summer months, when the lakes dry up, they move from lake to lake to feed. By March, they are ready to fly back north to their breeding grounds again. 
but this timeless rhythm is under increasing threat. Urban development is the single greatest threat to the wetlands of the Peel Yalgarup system. Population growth has seen our city expand dramatically. The growing population has a voracious appetite for land, for building houses and industry. In this area in 2001, we had almost 20,000 households. Today, we've got almost 30,000. And in 2021, we're expecting we'll have 50,000 households. Many of these new homes are being built very close to the wetlands. As our lifestyle encroaches on the habitat of these birds, our human activity has a direct impact on them. With the pace of urban development, more and more shorebirds are now having to share their homes with us. The loss of wetlands is an international issue. In 1971, countries signed up to the Ramsar Convention. That means we promised to look after these wetlands, to conserve them and to make sure that they were sustainable for the future. The peel yalgarup system is part of that convention. As part of the Ramsar Convention, we've developed a plan. This will help us balance the growth of our region with the very important environmental needs. These wetlands are so significant. They are part of a chain of food stops along the flyway. When these birds arrive here, they've been flying several days without food. They'll have lost half their body weight, and if they don't eat immediately, they'll die. If these wetlands aren't here, can you imagine what will happen to them? Sorry, mate, I think Fanny. To preserve the feeding grounds, we need to understand more about how the birds travel. Yeah. The Wader Study Group, led by Bill Rutherford, regularly tags and bans the shorebirds in order to find out where they go along the flyway. And we have to net during the evening because the birds will see the nets during the day and they won't fly into them. So there's no disguise for the nets at all. We'll put a few more nets up. We've still got the light to do that. Um, we'll go back, have a bite to eat, and um, we'll come back in about an hour, an hour and a half and check the, check the nets and hopefully we'll get a few then. We check the nets on a regular basis, about once every two hours, and we extract the birds out of the nets, which is quite a difficult process because it's dark. We've got a line of nets in front of us and you can see a bird hanging in there. Okay, so... Yeah. This looks like a curly sandpiper. We have a very high success rate of these birds being found in China. This bird is going to be banded, processed, checked for any strange diseases. Then it's going to be sent on its way. And there's a very real chance that this bird will be seen further up the flyway. We bring the birds back to our base camp and there we measure and weigh the birds and attach bands and coloured leg flags to the birds. These are unique numbers and unique colours that tell us that the birds were banded here on the Pill Ramsar site and nowhere else. Now, do you want to let this one go, mate? One of the key pieces of information we require and we get back from this banding process is that we understand and document the routes that the birds take on their northward migration. To help conserve these birds, we need to know the sites that they're using so that we can make these into nature reserves and protect those areas to maintain the refuelling stops up and down the flyway.
The Mandra Bird Observers Group conducts counts which help us understand when and how the birds move from one lake to another in the local system. What we're doing here is we're collecting baseline data and that baseline data will be used in the future to help manage birds, the migration of birds, which areas are important and things like that. And if you haven't got the, the basic baseline data then you can't make those management decisions. It will take more than a few people to ensure that we've got these wetlands for the future. It will take a whole community. Because we live so closely with these amazing world travellers, we have to be careful about the impact we have on them. We need to know what we're doing to our environment, to tread carefully, to leave a small footprint. If you're out walking your dog, keep your dog on a lead. Don't disturb the birds. If you come across a flock of birds feeding, don't disturb them. Get outdoors and enjoy this magical place we live in. Understand the amazing bird life that come here. The Mandra Bird Observers Group will happily show you more and more about this incredible environment. If we work together, we can ensure that this ancient pathway does not close down.